All right, hey go fans. I have a special five Don Taijim game to show you today where everything pretty much went right. That's pretty cool, right? How often does that happen? And while there's certainly some mistakes around the way, uh, along the way, enough of it went right that it was just a joy to play Go. It was just sort of like drinking a nice cold glass of water on a hot summer day. It just went down real smoothly. So in part of my reviewing of this game, I want to really emphasize some of the missed opportunities that both me and my opponent, but especially my opponent, just had during the game to really try to turn things around and, and didn't. And that's that's sort of the premise of the, today's video, just when things go right. You know, I just, we'll just have a nice, easy game. Um, in this game, I am black, and uh, you'll see things start to go right from this very first Joseki. And this move right here isn't played anymore. This is a very old, old-fashioned move, the two-space extension from a low approach. And I know this, my opponent doesn't know this, and so right off the bat I sort of combat this uh, beautifully. This, uh, and, and, and if you haven't seen this position before, take a second to think and try to figure out what black should do to... Uh, in this case, I'll, say, I'll, say, I'll give you a hint to over-concentrate white in this position. And here, I'm just going to go on. If you want to think about it, pause the video. Um, but indeed, the best move for black is actually here. And this may seem really strange, but if you play naturally, or at least the traditional way, which is, I think, pretty natural, you'll see the position that white ends up with isn't very good, because this stone here works really well with this stone here. And again, if you can't see why, let me go forward three more moves. White plays here, again, the natural move, and then black plays here. And white actually has a defect. If white plays something else, uh, here, let me just play a real passive move. There is a slice here. And so it even turns out that if white plays here, this isn't even that good for white either. Uh, white, this is the best white can do. Um, so white gets to keep the corner, but black basically eats two stones. I know they're not dead yet, but they're <laughs> for her purposes, pretty much dead. Um, Black takes command of the bottom in a big way, and there's still a little bit of Aji here with this stone. The stone is not completely dead yet. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> this is, and this is actually some, some, can be some rough Aji for White to deal with. For instance, if Black were to run this out, and let's say White has to play here because there's some sort of Black position, you can just see that this is just a ladder. So th there's there's a lot of Aji here. Right now, it's okay because white will play here or disconnect and still manage to kill these two stones. But man, anything else over here and this gets very pl problematic for white. So that's basically um, the best white can do at this point. But if we go back further, what's interesting, and I didn't, I didn't, I don't actually know how the robot would handle this. And so, so part of the, the joy of, you know, after this is the result of the game, <laughs> uh, that's, that's <clears throat> best for black in this scenario, or at least black, best that black can expect. And white, you know, has a nice solid group, but it's pretty small and pretty over-concentrated. You could say, well, black doesn't really have any real points. Sure, but this wasn't black's corner to begin with. White didn't keep the corner in this position. And black actually has a pretty easy group to manage. Uh, you can imagine if, if white were to ever come here and attack this severely, black just turns and is alive. So, again, to have such a nice center-facing, center settled group already, Miraculous for black, like great result. Uh, do, 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 do. If we go back, what was I going to show you? I was going to show you what white really should do in response to this move. And the best move that the robot came up with, let me put it up here, turn off those variations, is actually to kick here first. And that's pretty interesting because the counter for black isn't to play this extension, which is the most normal one. Um, but at least it didn't run that many variations. I guess I should run this a little bit longer for it to really think through. Uh, but that robot intuition is to play there, which is real cool. And we've seen this type of formation a lot before, albeit without these two stones, when white opens 4-3. Oops, let me turn off you, robot. Uh, and black starts here. We get the same exact pattern. But the difference here is that in this position, we already have these two stones uh, exchanged. And so uh, that's good for black. <laughs> okay, anyway, back to the game. Do, 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 do. Uh, here, you might also wonder, well, if Hanang is so bad and over-concentrated, why can't white come through and, and peep and eat this stone? 
white totally can. But then this looks real good for black. Like this is not as good of a formation for a base as black's in the corner. Like black gets the corner, this is more efficient. Three stones and likely six to maybe at least eight points. Well, I should say at least six to eight point corner. Uh, and white's not going to get that, and this is white's corner to begin with. So black is quite happy. Similarly, this is the, the same way. Um, same kind of idea. So both of those are good for black. All right, but anyway, uh, we play here. And this is a part where my opponent, he played, like, like so So he played very this very traditional passive old Joseki. But he did one other thing to make my game a little bit easier. He played a very passive move here. And yes, this undercuts the base on, of black on one side. It, you know, I think his thinking is, oh, he's going to force me to make a base. And indeed, if you look at the robot variations, uh, the robot indeed just wants black to, you know, build something immediately. But that's not the only option. Like, Tanuki is all, like, it's looking at all these Tanukis and it's saying, you know what, this group is actually fine. It doesn't, it's not a solid base, it's not, not guaranteed life yet, but it's fine, it'll manage. So, this moves very slow, very slow. This group, this white group is already alive, like it doesn't need more help, and white is helping from the strong side. And when you're already strong, that's not what you want to continue reinforcing most of the time. So, in response to this, I played far, you know, very far away, I played all the way out to here. Um, I, I, the robot says these little short extensions are better, just more solid, and that's fine. Uh, white came in here. Again, this is good direction in the sense that black is trying, or white is trying to make this really passive stone useful. Like, like white spent a move to unseat this weak-ish group, and so now this is white's attack, both on this and this. The problem is that this is a very loose attack. It's not applying that much pressure to either one of these groups. So I kind of ignore, or at least ignore the bottom, just continue to play the top. Um, robot's not in love, ever in love. I've just never found a situation where it likes the high-low double approach. Uh, in this case, we put it on. Um, the robot is all about, you know, just just <laughs> make the base. And we're already almost at a two-to-one favor here. Um, but it did consider all these moves, like 57, 62. It didn't put any real thinking into these variations. So these numbers are very suspect. Uh, if we can let it think a little bit longer... Yeah, they're all... Oh, wow, all right. It just ruled out a whole bunch of them. Yeah, this is double approach is your other option. But they're all playable, like they're all winning positions. Uh, so, play this one, and surprisingly, white plays this one. The new, the newest robot, Joseki, is here. So again, twice my opponent has not played, has not, has not kept up with robot moves in the, the last five years of AI development. So played here, which is very old school, um, and basically just sort of coward. One thing about this game is that my move, my moves, so many of my moves are playing robot moves. Like this, certainly this Hane and Connection, these are, you know, number one candidates. There, of course, there's a lot of just obvious moves for Black that I play and the robot agrees with. Um, but yeah, it was just surprising just how many moves, how many of my moves were actually the most preferred robot move. Uh, made me feel really good, warm and fuzzy inside. When everything goes so smoothly, it's it's real. It does does wonderful things for your confidence at the game and your ego. I guess the ego part may be a plus or a minus depending on where your ego is at. But yeah, it was just very it's it's just warm and fuzzy feelings. So when White does this, this is a little bit passive. And yes, White gets a corner, but there's still some defects in the corner, namely the three three point. Later on, right, we already sort of have it peeped partially peeped a little bit. So keep that in mind. That'll come back into play later. <laughs> uh, in this position, I now take this base move. And even though this is this is one of the best moves according to the best shapes, it still has a weakness. And this weakness, like the fact that white can't really find it for, you know, in the whole the whole opening of the game. <coughs> Basically, basically guarantees white to lose all momentum. Uh, and so I'll give you a second to 
think about this group, like find the weakness, where's the weak point, and see if you think you would play it in your own game. So take three seconds. All right, so that weakness, I'm going to point it out right now, because it'll be, avail be available for quite some time here, is here. This shoulder hit, right, is threatening to cut through this way, and it's also threatening to cut through this way. It's a dual threat. And most of the time, what should happen is black should just defend, and if white comes in this way, black probably tanukis. That's it. You don't have to do a whole lot more than that, just tanuki. Basically, let white cut off this stone. Um, this does mean white... It has taken a strong group and extended it even further. And so even though, yes, white gets 10 points here, plus central influence, white has invested so many stones in this group. Like, a, like black has gotten a tanuki two, three times to let white get a strong group like this. And all these stones are next to each other, right? The only gap is from here to here. So white's still over-concentrated. But this is the weak point, right? So timing this move and at least getting black to decide on a response... White doesn't even have to follow up right now. Uh, white can go back to managing other things. But that is that is the weak point. Keep that in mind. That will matter. <laughs> All right. And so white tanukis this way, which seems a little bit desperate. And I want to I want to just draw your attention to the overall board. What does white have? Well, white has two solid medium to small corners. And this one stone in the middle of the board on his own side where he has the two corners. That is it for influence. And so at this point, white is feeling a lot of pressure to get anything else somewhere else. Like this, like I, like I know I know black doesn't really have much in terms of like cash in hand or even really that strong potential, but all the other neighborhoods already have a black stone in them. So white's feeling some potential. And this is the move that white comes up with. What does the robot think? Well, well, besides that, <laughs> here, let's make this exchange first, and then, look, because that'll be a more meaningful variation. Uh, this move right here, which is pretty nice, actually. I like it. I think if you played the, the low approach, I think you'd be doing fine. You have to open up this side of the board somehow. And the best way to do that with keeping this thickness in mind and not letting black build anything too large too quickly is to actually attach far out, right? Again, five years ago, this move would have been unimaginable. But we're living in the land of AI, and they've kind of discovered this is fine. Like, this is one of the attachments that's fair. Okay, so instead, white plays this. This is a little bit of swing and a miss. My move is the robot move. This is to play this one little space extension. Just push white towards the thickness. And my goal here was to, you know, in tempo, basically push white towards me and build up more on the outside in response. This, this little move, like, like pro Go players for, me, for centuries now have known this move is actually a, quite a strong move in defending the corner. Uh, I know we're used to thinking Shamari, you know, these one space or one knight's move jumps or even two knight's moves jumps to enclose the corner. If you, if you, this is like the next best option, right? This is the bronze medal. And so this, the fact that this, helps defend the corner so well, plus puts pressure on this white stone, really hems it in, uh, makes it really valuable in this case. So, and then here. All right, let's take a, a brief tea break. Today we're drinking a, a green tea from China. If I remembered how to pronounce its Chinese name, I would tell you, but I don't, so that's all we're going to say about that. Uh, so here. There's an interesting thought process for me. At this point, I'm, I'm thinking, okay, why I can't kill this white group. <laughs> I've got a weakness over here. <laughs> and yes, I'm strong over here, but I'm low. Uh, there is perhaps the opportunity for, if I really go after this thing, right, start with moves like this, there's also the opportunity for white to disconnect underneath too. So, like, this group is not going to die. What I can do is harass it. And I want to use it. I want to harass it to get more strength in the middle. The obvious move for this are the obvious moves to do this are shoulder hits. And I do play one. I take I take some time here on the clock to figure out which one I want to play. And I get it wrong. The robot disagrees with which shoulder hit to play. This is the one I play. The robot says this one. Um, the reason why I didn't play the robot one is because I whoops, ooh, thought it would go like this. <laughs> 
And for some reason, when I was reading this out, like, like I'm, I'm used to this Joseki. <laughs> this is this wedge Joseki, or white place here, and then black pulls back. Uh, looks like this. Um, this shape looks bad. This empty triangle shape is not ideal. And so I thought white, even though I'm strong over here, like everything is fine. If it goes like this, I just didn't want to end up with this empty triangle shape. And it turns out I'm just dumb. And that if it, if it were to play out like this, you wouldn't make the empty triangle, or I would, shouldn't make the empty triangle shape. I would just connect this way. <laughs> and furthermore, if white were to play here, I actually have much stronger uh, responses. Right, like I can actually get more if it goes that way. So anyway, I, sh I should just do that. This is my mistake. Still, even with the wrong shoulder hit, this is still a good result. So here, white's gonna play kind of passive. Um, this is a better option for white in this case. Again, I'm weak. White has to start some mischiefs. So this is another missed opportunity by white. Another reason why this game went so swimmingly smooth is that white never really pushed back in any strong way. Like this is this is too late now. Um, this is actually a mistake. I should just connect, and I get it's almost identical. So I make two mis mis small ish mistakes here that do matter. Here's the second one. I link up with this move. I should display this move and just take this nice wall. It's facing a solid corner, and just really this this wall commands so much power over the bottom. And now all I have to do is is manage this group, and I have a really great move to do it that I don't actually see. I play its next best option. <laughs> All right, whoops, uh, I don't play that one, I play that one. Um, white should jump here. This is just another sort of, a little bit too slow, a little bit too honest. Um, I'm, I'm willing to bet money that my opponent is uh, probably an older gentleman who's been playing Go for 30, 40 years, you know, plays at a strong level, but hasn't learned some of the new moves, some of the new AI advances, and is probably a fundamentally pretty honest person, right? They're not... They're, they're, they're looking to <clears throat> enjoy the games that they play, they like the mental challenge of it, but they are not looking for chaos and mischief and, and you know, hard fighting. That is not uh, what this Go player wanted in this game. And I would say against those types of players, I do very well. <laughs> like, I, I play very solid. Like, I, I tend to be a little bit more conservative and, and fundamentally honest in my play a little bit too uh, much of the time. I'm definitely not looking for chaos in my games. Um, but I also tend to be a little bit greedy. And if you have two very honest people and one of them is greedier than the other, that person will usually do just well, just fine, right? They'll, they'll usually have an advantage because they're, I'm at least willing to ask for some things that mm, may or may not be a completely reasonable, but um, whereas the, the really honest player won't, won't ask in the first place. So at this point, uh, let me turn on the moves here. Yep, there is this move that is very nice that that unites this. Um, the move that I played is here, and that's, this is fine. It's just not the best. Uh, white actually has this nice counter move to both increase the strength of the weak group and harass this in a, in a pretty strong, meaningful way, right? We're threatening to cut directly. So that uh, instead, if I play here, I'm actually threatening to harass the white corner, which is pretty interesting. If I turn on, whoops, hello. Are we gonna show moves? Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, in this case, still come back and play the weakness. It's still on the board. Uh, anything good over here? I guess this is the best one. And I'm gonna play this just because it's a little more honest. <laughs> just looking at these exchanges. Hmm. Yeah, let's assume that's the more honest one. It looks it looks like black has at least one eye here. And oh, this is interesting though. Hmm. Yeah, okay, I see. So descending here for black would be a dual threat against both of these groups. So that's hmm. all right. Yeah, it's 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 a little kludgy. It's a little <laughs> a little risky. But I see it. Okay. Turn that back off. So I mean, this is the move I was looking for. White didn't find the the poke move, the shape move. Uh, white just immediately tried to help this stone, which is fine. It gave me a, a moment to fix my shape. The robot actually likes to play this move. This is a little more dishonest. Uh, but as long as white's weak over here, there's nothing white can really do to attack this. 
Um, obviously, for those of you who know the mouth shape, uh, this is one move away from the mouth shape. Ignore this. I'm just demonstrating the shape. <laughs> this is not a mouth shape, which means there's a weakness here. <laughs> And that weakness is something you constantly have to read out in and out of your games and all the other variations that go around, around this. Whereas if you have a mouth shape, you really don't need to do much reading. And so again, my play was very solid, very secure, uh, very honest. And benefited me. Okay, white jumps out again, and I play this move. This move's fine. The robot, I think, just jump out is simpler, but doesn't matter. They're pretty similar. But here, uh, <laughs> white pushes... And this is sort of where I have my first accident this game. And it's not, you can, you can just see it sort of coming up in the graph here where there's this descend down. What I should do is just back off. Just be like, everybody's cool. Just continue my everything is fine philosophy to this game because I just asked for just a little bit more. And I, I again, still had a nice result in this bottom left-hand corner that's still carrying me a significant advantage, right? 71% to 28%. So... I should just be continuing the same philosophy, but no, at this point I'm I'm thinking I need to define some shapes a little bit more, I need to dig my heels in a little bit. And I do some reading and I'm and I'm thinking, oh okay, well I'll I'll get something over here. I'll be able to settle and I'll settle and I can go play the right hand side of the board where I have already some influence, some advantage, and build it from there. So I push through and cut. <laughs> None of this is good. <laughs> Pushing is actually okay, but it's probably better that I just turn back. And this is actually, there's still this cut here for white that white has to deal with. You know, if white did something like this, I'm pretty happy about <laughs> this. Like, now white has two weak groups that are running together. Oh, man. <laughs> this is just happy days for black. Uh, this is slightly better. <laughs> white at least can threaten to undercut this somehow. But... Eh. I mean, I'm going to get stronger here, too. Like, is white going to block? Like, it's it's a little, it feels certainly very risky for white. So, um, again, the pushing is okay. It's really just committing to a cut. I don't need to do... Uh, this is this is just one of those old go proverbs, right? You don't push unless you're going to cut. Uh, but again, there are a lot of these situations where you don't have to, and the robots have shown us that. You can push, create the defect, and just, you know, leave it alone. <laughs> uh, I cut on this side thinking that, oh, you know, this group is actually stronger than this one right now. This is the one I'm more worried about, so I'm cutting on the side I don't want. That's another go proverb. Uh, but in doing so, I am giving white a panuki next to my weak group. And so this is very risky. This is like, robot says, okay, you just made it almost a 50-50 game. Uh, you've, you've taken a very winning position and kind of thrown it away. <laughs> White plays here, and then white clamps here, and both of these are, you know, minor mistakes. This is a small mistake, too, but then white turns this into an eye for some reason. Like, white is under no such obligation yet. <laughs> and in fact, you could tanuki? Yeah, that's what I thought. It looks like this is this is the most natural best move here, where instead of digging, hunkering yourself down in, into this group, uh, just get out. And if black doesn't cut right now, these groups are, these two weak groups for white are almost going to link up, and that will get white back in the game. Instead, uh, white really hunkers down. This Hane is not good. I don't really don't need this. I really don't need this. Like, it's not bad. I am, I am keeping these two groups separated. My own thought process is, well, I'm kind of strong here now, so I don't really mind leaning on this group that's just going to live. But, eh, it's all, it's all a little mad. This move was bad. This, this, this was an unfortunate... Um, I thought white had some more play in here with harassing the eye space. And I was like, you know, let me just turn this into guaranteed points and guaranteed life. This is a big move, too, uh, in terms of endgame, at least. This white group is still a little bit too strong. If, if white had one less stone here, like if this is a group of three and a two, this move, I think, would have been actually, like, legitimately good because now I could really attack this stick group. But even so, with this here, I can't really attack it. It's, it's got just too much eye space. Uh, white pushes, and that's fine. And then here, this is this was actually a really fascinating study of the robot. So there's this, if I play like this, there's this double peep move left over right there that white can take advantage of. Oh man, look at this, <laughs> okay. Um, so I didn't play this way, I played here. And then what's like, oh yeah, that's fine. 
the robot actually really wants <laughs> me to play this. <laughs> and, uh, and it also wants me to Tanuki. <laughs> and it's like, oh, double peep? We don't care about that. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> like, if white, if white takes this, like, eh, it's fine. <laughs> it's like, okay. I really, uh, hold on, let's see. It says, yeah, it's, it's, it says it can't even win by killing this all, or... Uh, what's the best move in here? Let's take a look. Looks like this one. What? It says this is the best? Hmm. For, for... This is nothing. This is just... Oh, no, oh, white can't... White, white, um... Yeah, black. Oh no, black can connect. This is nothing. So what? What is the point of this? This is a robot not being able to do life and death apparently. Okay. Well, so anyway, conclusion: black is fine. White can capture a few stones in the middle, link up one of the weak groups. But man, black gets two moves on the outside. So this double peep not a real issue. I mean, it 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 again it save if. <laughs> By defending it, I'm also defending this little half of group of stones. But again, those aren't that important. At this point, I'm human. I'm still thinking if I just back off here, I'll have an opportunity to cut this cut in between these two groups later. But uh, notice, you can see, already see the white circle. My opponent, super honest, is like, oh, you know, I have a weak group here. I have a weakness here. Let me just capture the stone and fix everything and place there. And at this point, you can see this is this is just you know, going from a 70%, 70-30 game to a 90-10 game, that's just too slow. And now, it's Black's move. Black is safe here, totally, and has a few points. Black's totally safe here, has a few points, almost as many as White took in that original slow corner. So if you kind of use these two groups and cancel out all of White's territory here, uh, White has this one corner, maybe a couple points here, and that's it. Like, there's nothing else on the board. <laughs> and it's Black's move. Black already has, you know, two influence, two influence stones in two corners and a wall. It's feeling great. And game agrees. Game is saying, you know, Black's up by 14. I play here. It, the robot wants to be a little more conservative, just focus on myself, building myself. I played here just because I'm like, well, White actually has a, has a pretty giant wall here. <laughs> so this could, bottom could get very big for White. So I play far away. And it's fine, it's close enough. 1% one, 1 loss. Uh, again, not even on the robot, robot's radar. This move's too small. This, ro this wall's like too big to be making a, an extra 9 points. Like, this is a 10 point move. There's all this right hand side. Look at this rainbow, isn't that beautiful? <laughs> all the moves, they're all good. Alright, here, let's turn that off for a second. I take this peep, which. Uh, actually, the robot says Tanuki, just ignore it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you gotta do something about the right. My opponent responds. Again, he's been playing so honest so much of the time. And I come over here and I play high. Why do I play high? Well, because I remember that part where I said I play honest, but I'm greedy. It's just more of my style. So I play the right direction, but a little bit higher than I probably should. Just a little bit extra. Ask for a little bit more. Um, normally, this is a fine invasion point. I play here, I'm willing to compromise. I'm like, okay, if you just want to settle another small group here, I'm fine with that. Like, I will take a corner that's bigger than your top left, and I will con I'll make a medium-sized moyo over here with using this sort of wall extension. Uh, White needs to play this one, though, because this compromise variation really requires White to, to have some defects to exploit. <laughs> when he just pokes up like this, this... <laughs> Is a lot less comfortable for white, <laughs> um, and if you're if you don't quite see the reason why, in this variation, you you get a pretty good feeling for how much space and strength white has in here, and you say, but that's the exact same amount of space and strength. Let me do some move exchange. Uh, exact same distance and space that white has in here, but the difference is white has this move in reserve, and if if that's a sente move, this is actually a lot more space. Right, we have another line up in terms of safety. White isn't thrilled about playing that move right now because this is also a really nice corner shape for black. But um, if if white if black makes white so strong, white doesn't need this move. 
Well, now there's more interesting things. We have clamps and clamps and maybe even a peep, which is pretty cool. If black just plays here, we have this. If black stands, well, it's complicated. <laughs> pretty complicated, actually. Uh, is that right? Yes. Dun, dun, dun. Cut and capture. So that's pretty cool. Um, so that's that's a pretty killer move. <laughs> but again, white can only play here if this is strong. <laughs> if white just plays here willy-nilly, black will probably just do this. <laughs> mm, although actually it's actually it's not even clear because this doesn't quite work. Yeah, so oh man. <laughs> I don't know. Right, but besides the point, again, missed oppor another missed opportunity for white here to to create some sort of defect, get some sort of momentum. And again, I'm, my goal of this video is really just to point out all the reasons why this was such a smooth, easy, cool glass of water on a warm, sunny day kind of game. Like another missed opportunity to create a defect. And then here, uh, Robot says this moves too slow. At this point, I can have the bigger dreams. <laughs> and I should just have the bigger dreams, but too over-concentrated. Um, white, white still comes in here. <laughs> And we run this thing out. I play this quite well, from the robot's perspective at least. Um, except here, this is the, the nice move. It turns out I'm totally strong over here, so if white connects, which white should, <laughs> this stone actually helps this connection for this whole outside group. And I can be much more mean to the groups on the inside. Um, by doing this, I'm, I give white a little bit of momentum here. And white plays a little bit of a crazy move. I don't quite counter correctly <laughs> because here I double Hanade thinking, oh, I'll, if I take the, if I, even if I let him live small over here, like that's fine. I'm going to get the corner. I'll have the opportunity to come back and capture these. Like, like I have plenty. I am, I am a glutton. I have tons of points available to me at this point. My opponent has nothing, but it turns out my opponent has even less of something if I just play here <laughs> because this is not, this is fine. If, if I let white take my corner, you might say, well, white got your corner. Look, that's 10 points for white. Well, these were a clean kill in Sente, right? So I got 15 points. That's 15, let me count number should make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, uh, uh, 17 points. A clean, clean, like 17 points for black. Uh, and this corner, you know, I can get a couple more points. Uh, things like this. Uh, well, it's very dangerous for white to take this Atari here because I might just play Ko for the whole thing because I don't, I don't need to fight Ko. I've killed all this inside. Like, or I, don't, I don't care if I win the Ko. Let me rephrase. So very dangerous for white to do that. And, you know, which means I should get that move uh, entitled. And so that's five points for white. So, yes, you can say this was black, black's neighborhood to begin with, but I have all these extra stones on the outside now. And I've got my next target right over here. So, anyway, that's the short story. So I didn't quite, I didn't quite keep my foot on the gas long enough. I tried too hard. Or maybe I, I, I don't know what I did. I, too, too much gas, too much braking. I don't know. <laughs> Wasn't driving well. Yeah. And after this link, um, I was like, oh yeah, I'll just come back and take this. But again, this feels lackluster because now my next target got linked up to a strong group, and so. You can see this is right before sort of the uh, like like my 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 top top winning percentage came down a little bit. Um, just a lot of missed opportunities. Like still very much winning the game, but did not throw the hammer down. All right, let's keep going a little bit. I play here. This is a brilliant move. <laughs> it's according to robots. Just does so many little things. Puts pressure on this group. This is a great exchange. Make getting this stone in. Oh man. This, this corner now, it's not dead, still, the corner's still alive, but this is a very happy exchange for black to get. White has to crawl here to live. I block, it's not the best move. Best move, I think, is this one. And if you're going, what? <laughs> it's because, up to this point, this group's still not alive. And so if this group isn't alive, and white has to play here again. Again, I'm strong enough to actually not respond to this move. Now I have this move. And now this corner is in the deep doggy doo doo.
So it's the combination. I need both this stone and this stone to kill the corner. So I'm real happy about getting the first one. That means the corner is going to be real small. But if I get the second one, that means the corner is dead. And so I have to be willing to give up a little bit more over here. In this case, I don't. I block. But it's very natural. White makes easy life. And then I try a little bit too hard, and that's why you see this wind meter go down. A little bit too hard. Of course, my opponent doesn't really defend. He just wants to get out. He's like, I... There, there's actually, like, a giant co in here. Uh, that's pretty dangerous. But he's just like, can I connect? And I say, yes, you can connect. And so we come back out of it with, like, another, like, 90-10 kind of winning percentage game, where I've just taken White's biggest territory over as my own. Uh, but still, I mean, that being said, this is actually a much smaller corner uh, than initially thought, and this, this, there's still some end game here, so I'm not, I'm not ahead by a gauntlet of points, I'm ahead by, you know, a medium 10. Play here, this is all fine. Uh, there's one more move I really want to show you in this game, uh, and it's one the robot came up with. <laughs> So I'm going to zoom through these a little bit. This is just end game. You can see from the win percentage, there's not much graph. Again, or there's not much change in the graph. It's really just all end game, and we're not really doing a whole lot to change the lead total. But there is one cool move. All right, all this, all this. You can sort of check it out. I'm just sort of poking, just reducing, defining barriers. I end up making a pretty good sized piece of territory right here in the end. All right, in response to this move. Now, there's some caveats here. There's the the most, the, the amazing Tetsuji move that the robot found. Actually, if you let the robot run, I don't know, dozens of thousands of cycles, it actually finds better better moves. I think the best move it finds is, the, no, is it there or there? I can't remember which one. It's one of those two. <laughs> uh, it's probably this one. I think, I think that's, I think that's the, the what, what, where the robot concluded was the best move. But, <laughs> the second best move was was awesome and was sort of the type of move that, you know, even as a Dawn level go player, or maybe especially as a Dawn level go player, makes you drop your jaw and go, oh, and you just feel that pain of like never being good enough at go. <laughs> and, and granted, this game went so, you know, sunny side up for me where I just took little advantage by little advantage and my opponent never challenged me. And it just sort of played into the game that I wanted to play. Like, everything in my plan kind of went fine. That I didn't have to work very hard. I didn't have to, to struggle and stress and find, you know, a killer move at this point in the game. So, in the game, I played here. Actually, I think this, this is also one of the... Like, maybe this is actually number two. After many, many cycles of computer thought, this might have been the number two move. Oh, no, actually, no, it depends. I remember how it was. It was, it was what, if you're looking at percentage or points... In terms of raw win percentage, this move was really high, but it was it was one of the most conservative. Like black loses a few points, but again, it makes the win percentage, it keeps the win percentage the highest. Oops, I'm going to go back to this position. In terms of raw points, in terms of the moves that make this game, you know, right now it says black has a 17 point lead on Katago. If I play this, notice how it drops to 15.7. So if I want to play, and it's and the move is like a fraction of a percent more risky, which is why, uh, you know, the robot still kind of favors moves like here and here. These are very high high percentage moves. They're much less risky. But the killer, the killer, awesome Tasuji move. You guys ready for it? Drum roll. That was the lamest drum roll ever. There. <laughs> And I'm gonna let you. I encourage you. Pause the video, and think about this move for 10, 20, 30 seconds before I before I try to even attempt to explain it. Uh, because it doesn't make sense until you really you really. It it's it's it sort of has like a little bit of an ear reddening quality to it, where this move actually kind of solves a bunch of problems. So pause the video. Take a look. And so, all right, I presume you all did that. We came back with genius reasoning as to why this move is so good. I'm going to turn on, whoops, let me click here. I'm going to turn on the variations. And 
let me also turn on the oh, pondering on. There we go. Okay, keep running, little computer. Why is this move so good? Actually, look at the score. It kind of goes between 17.0 and 17.1. And actually, no, I don't want to turn this on yet. Hold on, go back. I want to. I want you to. I want to try to explain it without all this garbage on the screen. All right. So in this game, let's all recognize Black has won this game, at least you know, barring any sort of huge mistake. And we have to look and see what, what are Black's problems or potential areas where Black could lose and or lose points, more, more specifically. And to do that, we have to look at weaknesses. Uh, if we think about this area, you can see there's actually a lot of weaknesses. And they're not, none of them are severe. Like, this is totally fine, like... Like, if white were to cut here, like, this just ladders and is fine. <laughs> um, you know, white can try to capture individual stones. That's, we don't care enough to, that's fine. In fact, if we do that, you know, black will just do this and actually start to make some real serious territory over here. Um, there is a little bit of a weakness over here and over here. Maybe white can get a cut and, and come in, but it's real hard. This group, even though it's pretty much safe, uh, there are some weaknesses, like, later on there is this sort of thing to pop out any eyes on this side, and black has to get two eyes or a connection uh, towards the center. And so you can see that if white were to just get, find time to get a couple stones in here, specifically, like, that one, right, our eye shape might be a little bit in trouble, okay? And, I'm, and I say might because white has to get like two or three gote moves to really actually threaten to kill us. So it's like a chance of a chance. Um, but the same thing over here, right? White can still cut us over here. There is a cut for white at this point, which exposes this cut and this cut, and this whole group uh, could become floating. And black isn't worried. Our group is huge. There's a friend stone here. There's defects in white. There's other things we can do, but this is this looks like white's best chance to cut this off and then find a tempo to attack this and this simultaneously somehow. All right, let's look at this beautiful move and what it does. If you actually play it out, now, now it looks, it looks, this is the type of move you play when you're actually going to cut off these two stones. The beauty of this is that's not what we're going to do in this situation. We're going to tell white to connect. And you're like, that's dumb. Like, we did nothing. But black's going to peep here now, okay, and, and white's going to connect again. And so now... <laughs> Check this out. We essentially got a stone here for free and a stone here for free. And we've implicitly, just by just by poking here, gotten two free moves that help both of our problems in tempo. We got to play both sides like for free. Because both these areas just needed just a tiny bit of help. We didn't need we didn't need a, a, a shape defining point. We didn't need a you know a, a, a pure linking move. We just needed just a tiny bit of help to manage both sides. And that's exactly what this sequence did is this stone totally helps us maintain the enough space for two eyes, uh, right? If we play down there, like white still, white can't really jump in here. Like this is not a thing. Um, this stone is just enough to, to keep this eye space. And again, over here, this stone is just enough to keep white from ever cutting here. This just dies because there's a stone here. So isn't that gorgeous? Like, if we just play here directly, well, now white's probably going to play something like this. And if we connect that way, maybe, maybe. <laughs> like, I think we're still strong enough that white doesn't have a chance or a prayer in the world. But maybe there's some weaknesses or something here that white can get an advantage of and maybe at least prevent all this from becoming black territory. So, this is one of those cases where just we're just playing the shape point is significantly worse than doing the sort of the batshit crazy cutting move that doesn't work. <laughs> and so these are the types of positions that will keep me up at night. <laughs> um, like if white connects here, we don't care. Right now we're going to attack and kill these four. Now we have real momentum. So white really is motivated to play this side. Whoops. Ah. Uh, 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 uh. And so we do get both shape points on both sides. Ah, isn't that beautiful? Ah, it hurts. Go hurts. When you see those really, really awesome moves. And so, like I said, uh, the robot, at this point, look at, look at the score, we're up to 19-point advantage for black, 
Oh, if we play this, yeah, 18 and a half point advantage for black. Like, just, just every ounce of efficiency uh, while keeping Sente. Um, man, some of those wedge stones, you, you don't play a wedge to actually cut, you just play a wedge to, to get the extra stones on the outside. Um, and they're just in the exact perfect location that you need to defend yourself. Ah, oh, thing of beauty. I can't, all right, we're done, we're done reviewing. Like, that's, this is, <laughs> like, if I, if I get to one of these moves a day, right, one of these little, <laughs> like, mind is blown, need to go, you know, do something, I don't know, go outside, <laughs> and just relax. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this game. Again, this is a really nice, easy, relaxing game where everything went right for me. Uh, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy, and even though everything went right, man, uh, just taking this game into Robot Land and pff, having it find a move like that still have the mind blown. So, you know, Go keeps, Go keeps being the freshest of all the games all the time. Sometimes you just have no words. It's just, it's no words at all. All right, happy going. See you guys next time.